so I'm gonna do it your way. So I'm going to do it your way. So I'm going to do it your way. Come on, somebody put your hands together for God and say, I'm going to do it your way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we're going to do it your way. Hey, hey, everybody, good to see you. It is Tuesday and it is No Limit Tuesdays uh, live at 1230. It is great to see you today. Hey, Peter in North Carolina. Hey, Angie. Hey, the rest of you guys. Um, it is great to see you guys. I really appreciate you. Um, amen. Hallelujah. Some more. Uh, good afternoon, Peter. How are you? How is the weather down in North Carolina? Amen. Um, I'm going to drink a lot of water so I can keep my voice together <clears throat> today. But again, it's No Limit Tuesdays uh, live at 1230 and um, Let's pray and see what God has for us today, and then we'll jump into uh, to what he's got to say. Um, Father, we just thank you for every person under the sound of my voice, every person connected uh, to No Limit Global. Father, I thank you for a hedge of protection around them and their families, around their finances, their businesses, their ideas. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that the angels are encamped about us in each and every way that they can be. So, Lord, we just lift you up and glorify you for all that you're doing in their lives. Father, I thank you for supernatural healing. I thank you for supernatural abundance. I thank you for a flow of the gifts of the Spirit in each and every one of our lives. I thank you for that which is true according to your goodness in the pulpit is also true in the lives of each and every partner of No Limit. And Lord, I thank you for all those who have sown, whether it's time, uh, talent, finances. God, I thank you for a hundredfold return on their behalf, Lord God. And we just lift you up. We glorify you on today. We thank you for what you called us to do. And we're declaring your goodness in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Nice and 80 degrees. Amen, Peter. Now, listen, there's no limit to how far God will come to rescue you. And there's no limit to how far he will come to redeem you and restore you. See, we have all placed limits on God and no limit global exists to help you discover how you have limited God. So we can help you take those limits off because we truly believe and we are living a life without limits. Hallelujah. Listen, I am. Um, so excited about today. I, I, I'm, I, I love the song uh, that our worship team was singing, <clears throat> saying, taking the limits off. I just, I, I'm, um, you, you, you know, when God gave me the name for No Limit, I did not realize just how deep this, this was going to be, how far uh, that this would go. When I realized every day, every morning that I wake up, that he is continuing to take the limits off of my life. And I'm enjoying watching God take the limits off of the lives of those who have connected uh, here. And so I'm, um, I'm just super excited about it. And so we've been in a series called Be Fruitful. In this series, God has just shared with me. I mean, he's really showing me how this series is one of the um, foundational ways that he's taking the limits off because he's taking us and bringing us into a season of maturity. <clears throat> and as you know, if you go, uh, go to No Limit, one of the rules here is you're going to have to read your Bible. And so where I got this from or where the Lord took me to as he began to explain it, was well, in Exodus. I believe you can find it in Exodus 16. It, it just starts, to, it talks about, yeah, you find it in Exodus 16. And so this is, um, you know, you're at the place where Israel has been delivered out of Egypt. Okay, so they've come out of a place of slavery. They've been in slavery for over 400 years. Um, and, you know, if you're a slave, you don't own anything. You don't have anything. So they've been in this place of bondage. They've been in this place of lack for, for four, over 400 years, and they're delivered out overnight. And when they leave, they leave with the wealth of Egypt on their backs and they go into what we, what they call is the wilderness and the wilderness is actually the desert. <clears throat> and the reason why this, this to be fruitful message is so important because uh, it, it is taking us to another level of maturity. Amen. Seed time and harvest will continue to abound in our lives. Amen. And so <clears throat> when you see this, you, if you step back and you, and you look at this, you, you, you'll see how God is maturing his people. And so he brings them out of slavery. He brings them out of Egypt. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And they go into the wilderness and they've got, they have all this stuff that they can't do anything with. Because you got to remember, they came out of Egypt with, with the wealth of Egypt on their back, but they went into the wilderness where there was nobody, there was nobody to trade with. There was nobody to do business with. There was no, there were, the ground wasn't good for sowing. So even if they understood seed time and harvest, they could do nothing with it because there was no water and the ground wasn't there to cultivate 
any crops and they were good they were moving through a space they were not meant to live there so in this season god said i'm going to take care of your needs and how did he do it he did it with manna and you see it in exodus 6, 6 exodus 6 16 <clears throat> i'm sorry in exodus 16 and you see manna falling from heaven and bread in the morning so what they did is they woke up every morning they came out of their tents and they got bread and they in the, in the afternoons they got manna which was meat and so they were they were sustained now they couldn't save any they couldn't carry it with them but it was it was just enough to keep them full and so it was a way of of the god used to have them trust him in this time of transition but you see something change you see something change when the leadership change and they go from their wilderness experience their desert experience into the promised land and remember that the promised land was the land flowing with milk and honey if you remember the story he talked about when Moses sent the spies out and Joshua and Caleb and all of them came back, they came back with, with not just information about the promised land, but they came back with actual fruit from the promised land. And the fruit was so big that they carried it on their shoulders. And the reason why this is important is because, you know, they didn't just come talking about a place. They came with evidence that the place actually did produce this type of fruit. And, and so when, when Joshua comes in, uh, everything begins to change. And you see this in, in, in Joshua 5, 12. So they've crossed into the promised land. In Joshua 5, 12, it says this. It says, then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. So hold on. <clears throat> so, so for an entire generation, 40 years, they'd been walking around in the desert and manna was falling from the sky. And so every morning they woke up and they had food show up there. Their only responsibility was to go get what he had dropped out supernaturally and eat it. That was their job. They, they didn't plant, they didn't seed. And so, you know, this is all they had to do. And I talked about this on Sunday, this, the, 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 the uh, I don't know if it's a Jewish proverb or whatever it is, but we've all heard it. And, and I believe it says, if you give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, You'll feed him for a lifetime. In, in this situation, when they were in the desert, they were, he was giving man fish. He said, okay, here, I'm going to take care of you. Your, your job is simply just to eat what I put in your hands. That's a level of maturity, right? And so all of a sudden, Joshua comes in. They go into the promised land. And the moment that they eat of the fruit of the promised land, the manna now stops. I mean, so how I've been sustained up until this point is now all of as has all has all changed in the drop of a hat so immediately you go from this place of immaturity where god is literally feeding you hand to mouth to this place of being in the promised land where now it is up to you how much you're going to eat and this is where seed time and harvest comes and really takes takes root so the expectation now is is that i've sustained you through your your desert season and now i've brought you into a land that produces in great abundance and so now it's up to you as a mature believer to know what to do with the seed that i've given you because i've given you the land and the land will do its job i need the sons of god to do their job which is to understand seed, time, and harvest. And now you are no longer limited by what I put in your hand alone. Your only limit is what will you do with the seed? Because the ground will always produce. And if the ground will always produce, then you just need to know how to manage the seed that I placed in your hands. And I believe this is where we are as a, as, as a ministry, is that God has taken us from a place where he's, he's done miracles. Because make no mistake about it, manna is a miracle. Showing up and, and manna just showing up on your behalf, that's a miracle. And, and all of us have a season where we're walking, where we're in our wilderness season, and we need God just to take care of us. Lord, if you could just keep us full, if you could just sustain us, we can't leave anything in the bank. We don't have anything extra, but Lord, you are taking, you are meeting our needs when we couldn't meet our needs for ourselves. We all have those seasons. But there comes a place at least here in No Limit, where God is saying, I've brought you out of that season. I've now brought you into the promised land. Now I need you to be a mature believer and I need you to manage the land. I need you to plant according to what you want to harvest. And now there's literally no limit on the harvest you can receive. The limitation will be on what, what's going on with your seed. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And, 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 and so when we're talking about, um, hold on. Let me wet my whistle. And so when we're talking about harvest, which we talk about so much in church, people, the reality of it is you go to work for a reason. You go to work because you, you like finances and you like money. You like money because money gives you the ability to do some things that you, that you find real challenging, very challenging to do when you don't have money. 
And so <clears throat> God is saying, I brought you into a promised land. What, what are you doing with your seed? See, for many of us, help me, Holy Spirit. For many of us, we are, we've, we've associated our life to the grind. This is the world's way of doing things. We've decided we're going to grind it out. So as opposed to thinking through the concept of seed, time, and harvest, and understanding that, the, you know, in Genesis 8, 22, it says, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest, and the earth still remains. So instead of understanding our kingdom way of increase, which is seed, time, and harvest, we, we, have, we have adopted the world's methodology of increase. Thank you, flow of Holy Spirit. And, and, and so then what we do is we go out and grind. So when God, God puts a picture of a house in your spirit, the next thing you do is go, okay, well, how do I get a second job? How do I make more money? And the question is, and, and I'm not saying that those are bad things because it, that in fact could be the seed that he would have for you to plant. But I want to, I want you to step back from a kingdom perspective and say, what is the seed that you would have for me? Not let me just associate what the world says I should do. What does the kingdom say I should do? Because for every situation, there is a seed. So in every situation, I should produce fruit. I'm going to say, in every, for every situation, there is a seed. So in every situation, I should produce fruit. And you see this over and over in, in, the, in, the, in the Bible that so many stories where, where, where God has to ask, what do you have in your hand? Because we, we, we oftentimes misidentify seed. It, oh, help me. Hey, what's going on, Chris? Good to see you, my uh, North Carolina brother. I love you, man. <clears throat> so and we, mis we misidentify seed. When he, went, when he went to the woman and she said, hey, I'm going to bake this cake and, and, and die. He said, well, bake me one first. She said she didn't have anything, but she had everything she needed in her hand to produce the harvest that she needed to sustain her life. And we know that he, she did that. And then uh, she, was, she had everything she needed to get herself out of the day. Man, I love you too, brother. This is, this is so important that we understand that, that oftentimes we can misidentify seed. And let me say it another way. You can be brought into the promised land. And you can see fruit, evidence, the DNA that you are on good ground. It's what happens here every Sunday when you hear the testimonies every, every, every uh, week about people getting unexpected money and jobs and businesses and all these things happening. That is the fruit that's coming from the land. But if you don't understand how to identify seed and how to plant seed where God is telling you to plant the seed, then you can be in the promised land, which produces abundant fruit and still not be fruitful. This is a part of the maturity he's calling us to. And so, <clears throat> you know, you also see it as, when they were talking about the, the five fish and the loaves. And, they were, and, and, and Jesus was, 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 had just finished ministering and, and, and his disciples were like, how are we going to feed these people? We, we, we don't have time. He didn't say they didn't say money. They said, we don't have time to go into the city and get food for all of them. And, 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 and Jesus looked at him. He said, OK, what he was saying was you have seed. Ah, and I am good ground because I am the Christ. You have seed. Just tell me, what do you have? And they said, all we have, all we have, help me, Holy Spirit. Man, I feel this thing. All we have is, 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 is a little fish dinner that this little boy has. And what Jesus said is, yeah, but all you have is all you need. And that's enough seed to produce a harvest because it's seed time, not seed time. It is seed time harvest. And so what, God, what Jesus was saying to them is, just bring me the seed and I'm going to show you the harvest. But here's what could have happened. And here's what happens to many of us. We, 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 it, we don't recognize the fact that we have the seed in our hand. Help me, Holy Spirit. And so I, you know, I told the story on, on Sunday. And God's been ministering to me. I went, we went back to Lake Gaston and I had a fishing tournament down there. And, you know, we, and I showed a picture of it. We came around the corner from the house we were staying at. Uh, Chris was there. And, uh, and, <clears throat> and, when I came around the corner on, on this boat dock, and I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, pretty much everything that's on that lake is a million, is a million dollars plus, plus, which is great. But we came around the corner and there was a helicopter parked on a boat dock. And a gentleman was there building a house. And, I, and, and it began to speak, speak to me. Now, I'm, I, I, I'm not, you know, I like jets, don't get me wrong, but helicopters are not my thing. But I began to sit there and, 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 and my mind began to wander a little bit. And, and I was becoming inspired because I was like, Lord, what kind of life, what has to happen that a man could wake up in the morning and take a helicopter to his, to his lake house and land his helicopter on his boathouse while he builds his lake house? 
And I said, and, and it's not that I, 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 am, I am coveting something that God didn't have for me. I am literally interested in that level of lifestyle. And then one of the reasons I'm interested in, one, yes, I want to bless my family, but two, the kingdom has to have evidence. Fruit. And as we produce fruit, then then what we have is our fruit speaks. Sometimes we've been preaching more than we've been than we've been than we've been uh, producing fruit. And so when the preaching comes without the fruit that comes with it, it's just words without power. And so our power is yes, miracles, signs, and wonders. And some of that is the evidence of what God does for us, even financially, as well as the healings, as well as the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge. And so I saw, I began to look at this. I was like, what a ministry tool this, these, these places have, can become. And the Lord told me, he said, I'm going to show you something. He said, you don't have a harvest problem. You have a seed problem. And then he began to show me this. He just began to open up a landscape. And he said, look, I've brought you into this place called No Limits. I created this place. I created the name. I've drawn the people here because this is the promised land for many of them. And what I'm telling you is that there is no limit to what I will do. The limitation is what will you do with the seed I have placed in your hand? I have proven to you that there's good ground. And he says, and here's how I can prove it to you. Look at the miracle signs and wonders that you experience every single week. And I know we can take that for granted, but I'm going to tell you, I've been in church a long time. I have never been in a place where, where miracles happen at the rate that they're happening. Just on Sunday, I got three more testimonies before I left the building. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that in a braggadocious way other than I'm bragging on what God is doing. What God is saying is it's like the spies that are coming back from the promised land and, 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 and speaking to the Israelites. And they were saying, yeah, the, it is the land flowing with milk and honey. <clears throat> they didn't just talk about it. There was fruit of the land. And again, whenever you hear these testimonies, the reason why we bring them up, the reason why we share is because what we're saying is we're not just talking about the fruit. We can show you the fruit. The evidence is literally sitting next to you, the person sitting next to you, the person who's online with you. That is the evidence. The evidence is, is that God is working miracles in their life. And why, why are the miracles happening now and didn't happen before? It could be. I would just suggest to you that he's brought you into a preordained land that was meant to produce a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. And so that what that means is, is that it could be in your life you've been somewhere where you've been provoked and prodded to, to sow seed. And I'm not saying whether that was right or wrong, but if the land wasn't right, if the environment wasn't correct, you putting seed on a concrete street is not going to produce. And when you looked around, you didn't see the evidence. You heard a convincing argument of why you should do it, but you probably didn't see the evidence of what that doing it would actually provide. And what God is saying here is, I am giving you evidence. So now what I need you to do is to do what you did before. Help me, Holy Spirit, to do what you did before that the difference is, is that you're in a different land. Let me say this differently. If the children of Israel were out in the desert and they decided that they were going to work the principle of seed time and harvest, they could take their seed and put it down in the sand of the desert, which had no water and no nutrients, nothing but sunlight. They could have prayed all day long. They could have danced and sung all day long, but there was nothing that was going to grow. Why? Because that land was not conducive. It was not the proper environment to handle seed. So no matter what they did, it was never going to produce at the level that God intended. And it means, so they had to wait until God brought them to the place that he had intended them to be, which was the promised land. And then in that place, in that land, it was going to produce. And so I'm just sharing with you, I'm encouraging you as I'm encouraging myself, is that God has given us the land. It, this land wasn't created. It wasn't made. It's not because I was so good or any of those things. It's, it is the gift and the grace of God that has anointed this place, anointed the people in this place to function in such a way. So he has given us the land like he gave Joshua the land. And now what he's saying is, what are you going to do with your seed? And so when we say we serve a no-limit God, <clears throat> then, then, then how do you take all the limits off? Because what he's saying is, there's no limit to what I'm willing to do. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it through you and not to you. I said something on Sunday that uh, it just resonated with me, and it reminds me that, 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 we, that, that we have so many folks that, that are interested in the lottery God, where, where, where we just want the thing to just land on you and be done to you. But see, the, the things of God that are that are oftentimes most powerful are the things that go through you. There's always a time when we want stuff just done to us and for us. Just like the Israelites in the, in the, in, in the desert. They, they needed something done for them because they had no way to take care of themselves. And so manna coming from heaven, that was for them. The, 
The cloud that blocked the sun, that was for them. The water that came out of the rock, that was for them. But when they got to the promised land, it started to come through them. Help the Holy Spirit. And so many of us have been used to God doing stuff for us. And God is saying, yeah, but now in this season, I want to do these things through you, which means you must be a willing participant, not just to, to, to allow me to do it, but to do the thing I'm telling you to do in the time that I'm telling you to do it. And it will produce the thing that I told you it would produce. Man, I hope this is helping you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, Miss Karen. And so I, I'm, 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 I'm encouraged and I'm encouraging you to, to literally just share with you this, that there's literally no limit to what God will do. And, I, and, and what I mean, let me explain this thing to you about seed. Uh, we are doing financially well. God has truly blessed our ministry to where we have. I'm full time. Uh, Takik is able to stay at home. Uh, we've got full time worship leader. We've got some stipend and some part time people. We do all of these things and we've done it without having to pass an offering plate. Not because we don't believe in tithes and offerings. Oh, make sure we, we, we obviously believe in tithes and offerings, but because God has just created, has given us a land. And then. <clears throat> And so this is not an effort to raise an offering. This is not what we're trying to do. Uh, what I'm, this is a kingdom principle. And what, the, and what God is saying is I need you to disciple this ministry into walking in the kingdom principle. And he said he's going to disciple us, giving us revelation on how seed works. Help me, Holy Spirit. Oh, the flow is... Whew. And, 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 I, and I began to see this a little bit when I, when I, was, when I read this book on the, from Oral Roberts, and, and I told you guys about it a couple of weeks ago, and he talked about being the voice and not the echo. And I, and, I, and I began to hear about, you know, if you know anything about Oral Roberts, he's got something called ORU, Oral Roberts University. It is an amazing campus in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But he also built a hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And this hospital is about the size of what we consider to be MCV. It is huge. And I knew that these things were true, but it had not come into context for me until he began to share the numbers in the book. And one of the numbers he shared in the book is that it was a $500 million project that he built debt free. And I mean, that just caused my mind to literally expand. I said, oh, my goodness, Lord, how did a man in the 80s build a $500 million facility debt free? We've not seen that today. If somebody builds a couple million dollar facility, period, we celebrate. If somebody builds five or ten million and they pay it off, we celebrate. But you're telling me he built over a hundred million dollars debt free? We haven't seen that today. And the Lord said yes because I gave him. Oh, I gave him a revelation on seed time and harvest that I did not give to everyone else. And so because he had a revelation of this thing, he was able to perform at a level that outperformed everyone else. Why? Because everybody had information that we live in seed time and harvest, but not everybody had the revelation that allowed them to take the access to, 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 to perform at levels that others weren't invited into. Because that's what revelation is. And so when God is saying to us, and he literally said to me, he says, I'm giving you in the ministry revelation on seed, like I gave to Oral Roberts. Nobody jumps and shouts about that because we don't fully understand what revelation means. And I'm, I'm going back through Sunday because it, it is so important for you to understand that it's a revealed thing, which means it's a hidden thing for others. But God has chosen to reveal it to you. And so God can give a room full of people information. But without the revelation on how to actually access what's inside the information, you can get excited about information. But, but you, you, you actually can't access it. And, and, and the examples I used was, and I'll use this example, Tiger Woods. Most of us have some understanding about how golf works or how tennis works. So pick a sport, any sport that you want. We have some understanding. Matter of fact, they all have a book. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. They all have a rule book that lays out the rules that says, here's what you can do, here's what you can't do. So we all have access to the rules, to the information on the game. But if you hear Serena Williams talk about tennis, or you hear Tiger Woods talk about golf, or you hear Michael uh, Jordan talk about basketball, it's not going to be the same Or Tom Brady talk about football. None of them are going to speak about their sport the way that we speak about it. And we all have the same information. And it's not because they know the information better than you. It is because God has given them a revelation an insight of the inside that information that allows to them to perform at a higher level and to go along with that revelation. There are gifts and talents that allow you to perform. 
And see, we we get this thing twisted oftentimes, and we and we begin to believe. We believe that it's about the gift and the talent. But but uh, I said this on Sunday, and I'll say it again. You, do you think Tom Brady's the best quarterback? Do you think Tiger Woods was the first person that could hit a golf ball the way he hit it? Do you think Serena Williams is the best tennis player? These are, None of these things are true because the gift and the talent without the revelation to go with it will never produce the outcome that God has. It requires revelation. Yeah. And in the ministry uh, today, often we've lifted information, but information without revelation is going gonna, is gonna to really struggle to produce fruit. And so when God says he's given us revelation on seed, seed time and harvest, what he's really saying is, I'm, I'm personally inviting you into a space that you would produce fruit at a level that many have not seen. You, you can go across to what many people, hey, seed time and harvest. People, people, have, people understand that that's in Genesis 8. They understand to some degree what that means. What God is sharing in this house is I'm giving you divine insight into how to operate in seed time and harvest. And I've given you the land that how and how, help me hold the spirit. And I've produced the environment for you that if you honor it, will take the limits off of all the things that, you, that you're trying to do. By understanding this. And what I mean by seed is this. I mean your time, your talent, and your finances. All of these things. These things are seed. And what I need you to be as you move forward, because God has given us such an amazing opportunity here, is I need you to become seed conscious. Seed conscious. For most of us in religion, we've become sin conscious. We're conscious of all the things that we've done wrong. We're conscious of everywhere we drop the ball. And I'm not saying there's no value to that. But what I'm saying is, is like you are sin conscious, one, you need to be grace con con conscious. And you also need to be seed conscious. And what do I mean? I mean that every situation that you walk in, what is the seed that God needs me to plant here? What, what is the seed? Oh, you should be always asking because God says, I give seed to the sower. Well, who is a sower? Someone who has a heart intent to sow. <clears throat> Yeah, a sower is somebody whose intent in their heart to, is to sow. And what God is saying, I provide, I give seed to the sower. So wherever you go, you should be thinking about, oh, how, what, 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 what do I need to do here? What seed? When you're walking in the grocery store, Lord, where is this? Is there a seed I need to sow? What is it that I need to do? Is there a smile I need to give somebody? Is it a hug I need to give somebody? Is there a word I need to give somebody? What, what, is there a tip I need to give somebody? What, what is the seed you want me to put in the ground here? Seed to the sowers. Why? Because it's your seed that produces your harvest. Because the situation around you doesn't actually matter. You are carrying, you are carrying the kingdom on the inside. And what God is saying is, I've created an environment for you. I've invited you into a place. I've invited you, invited you into this space where you have unlimited harvest. But I need you to have the heart and the intentions of a sower. And if you can be thinking like a sower, if you can align your mind and align your heart with my heart and my mind, then you that means you're always thinking about sowing, then I will forever be giving you seed. And then when you plant the seed, I will multiply the seed you have sown, my goodness, and I will enrich you in all things while you wait to get the harvest. See, this is how, yeah, thank you, Lord God, this is how seed <clears throat> consciousness can take you from where you are right now to the place that you've only dreamed about. It's not because necessarily you hit the lottery, because I'm telling you, the lottery is on the inside of you. When you understand what God will do for a sower, you understand that being a sower will blow the doors off the lottery any day of the week. You are the walking lottery ticket. Help me, Holy Spirit. Shh. You are the, the, the walking lottery ticket. Mm, glory to God. And so I just, I, I encourage you and I challenge you and I just let you know that there is, that, that God is doing um, uh, he's doing miracles. He's doing he's doing an amazing thing here. And and the evidence is 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 is, is clear and apparent for all those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. I, I want you to be seed conscious. Seed conscious. And the enemy's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And because he cannot stop the seed, hear me, he cannot stop the seed. Because where does the seed get supplied from? Oh, come on. Where, where does it, he said, when God says, I give seed to the sower, my question is, if he is the one who's giving the seed, who is the one that's supplying it? It is God. So if God is giving you seed, 
inside the seed is it is encoded in its DNA to produce the thing that God has intended for it to produce. Here is the issue. The only issue is it must be planted in the environment he's called. So when the devil comes to steal, what is he trying to steal? He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy the seed that you have. And how does he do that? By creating situations. One of the ways he does that is by creating situations where you don't sow. Because, because the seed cannot do what the seed is called to do until it's sown in the ground God called to cause to sow it in. So you can't respond. Yeah. You, yeah, you can't respond. You can't be reacting to situations. You have to look at every, every situation as an opportunity to sow. Because you will eat the fruit of your harvest. And so, listen, we're coming up on a higher level of maturity. And I'm, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging myself. Holy Spirit is challenging me to, to be thinking as a sower at all times. And I'm telling you, this no limit, seed conscious, be fruitful message is literally going to transform lives. There are people, hear what I'm telling you, there are people who are not millionaires right now that will be millionaires and they'll look back and realize it was because of this message. Not because I taught it, because this is the way that God is imparting this thing into these that which are his people. Be conscious of your seed. Be conscious of your seed. Your words are seed. Be conscious of your seed. Your actions are seed. Be conscious of your seed. Your finances can be seed. Be conscious of your seed. God has given you good ground. And he's literally opened the gates and said, I've, there is no limit to what, to what I will do. You just show me about what you want to plant. What does a farmer do? A farmer doesn't stand and just look at the field. He plants the thing that he's looking to receive. And so that may be naming your seed with your actions. That may be the, you know, whatever it is, you have to go to God and ask, what is the seed that you have for me here? Mm. What is the seed that you would have me to plant for the harvest that I'm looking to receive? And I'm telling you, God, God is going to, God is going to produce as he always does. Because the system was set, the system was rigged, the kingdom system overrides the world system, and it's designed for us to prosper in every way, in health, in wealth, in, uh, that we would have life and have it to the, to the fullness until it overflows. So look, guys, I love you guys. I'm trying to preserve my voice a little bit. <clears throat> but remember tomorrow night's discipleship you and so we will see you at uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow night and then we have service on Sunday also tonight is our men's meeting looking forward that, to that as well if there's anything I can pray for you about let me know uh, send us a message but great to see everybody man and I pray hey Takika good to see you beautiful uh, I pray that you have an amazing day and I, and I pray that you um, hmm Hallelujah. God, I just, you know, God has given you, and, and, and you'll, you'll, you will know exactly who I'm talking to. God has given you precious seed. Yeah. Some of the trials in your life actually produced seed. And God has placed precious seed in your hand. But, but he can't multiply the seed you don't sow. So make sure that, 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 that in, in some of, I, I, I don't, I, I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. There have been trials. There have been tribulations. There have been real challenges. And God has, has given you seed almost in exchange to say, listen, I, I saw, I know what you went through. And I've been with you the entire time. And I've given you some specific seed, some precious seed. Make sure that you put that seed where I called you to put it. Hmm. Amen. So anyway, guys, I, I pray that uh, that you guys enjoy the rest of your day and be seed conscious in all that you do, because truly there is no limit. The life that God has shown you in your dreams, in your visions, in your in your imaginations, in your imagination is tied to the seed that he's put in your hand. Identify the seed, plant the seed in the place and the time that he's called you to do it. And I'm telling you, testimonies are going to flood this place. I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. <laughs>